Greetings everyone and welcome to the first video in my series showing you my process of making an original short film. For this first video, I thought I'd give you a little history of my experience making short films. Now I've made a lot of shorts, ranging from the cringy awful to pretty damn good. I've been making short films since I was nine years old and with every single one I've made, I've learned something new about the process, but there's not enough time to go through them all. So in this video, I thought I would narrow it down to talking about three of my short films that taught me the most. There's no exact right way to make a movie. It's different for everybody. With this video, I hope to bestow some of the lessons I've learned through trial and error. If you wanna check out these three films, I'll put the links in the notes below, along with the links of some of my other shorts as well. Okay, and with that, let's get into it. Michigan Basement. Michigan Basement was the first short film that I took extremely seriously. I wanted this thing to be great, and I wanted to prove to myself that I could make a well-produced short film. I wrote the script over the course of a month or two. It was 30 pages long. I had made skits and little movies here and there, but this was easily the biggest project I've ever taken on, so I knew I would need help. I ended up asking my friend John, who was integrating into the DSLR world a little bit, so I asked him if he would shoot it for me on his Canon 60D. I remember saying to him, we can shoot this thing in like two to three days. No problem. Ugh, how wrong I was. Michigan Basement forced me to do so many things that I didn't know how to do. I just had to dive in. This was the best class I could have ever taken on filmmaking. It taught me how much work actually goes into making a movie, even a short one. That was the basement I did laundry in. It looked that creepy when I walked down there for the first time. I got the inspiration strictly seeing the location. We didn't have to change anything. I ended up handling a lot of the roles on set, but I also had a lot of great help. The cast, especially the lead, was absolutely amazing. Most had never acted, and they really did such a great job. You could just feel the passion from everyone involved. I was really timid when I first started doing all this because all of a sudden I had a ton of people around and I was in charge of them and I was in charge making sure that I knew exactly what I wanted out of the performances and out of the sets and out of the costumes. The script ended up changing maybe around 10 times and that was because the plot I wrote was simply just not doable. So me and John completely changed the villain and the ending of the story, which in the end worked out way better. The cast, the crew, and myself all worked for free, and I spent quite a bit of my own money out of pocket to make the film. But looking back on it, I really do think that I had the best group of people ever to help me make this thing. Six months later, the movie was finished and we held a premiere. We almost filled the theater with our friends and families. Never have I felt more pride than when I saw the audience jump and get scared at what we had created. All the work had paid off. Right away, I wanted to make another one. The Glass Hour. The Glass Hour was a completely different experience than Michigan Basement because I went into it with more confidence. I had a better grasp on the producing side of things. However, I didn't have John as my DP this time around and the film suffers for it, you can tell. I let the whole thing myself and once again, I had no money and pretty much no equipment. It is, however, my favorite film when it comes to story and style. The movie was supposed to be a start of a series of films called Tales from Further Down in the same vein as Twilight Zone or Tales from the Crypt. And although the film lacks polish, it's clear that I wasn't afraid to go a little bonkers with the concept. This is also my second film working with Tara, the actress from Michigan Basement, and it was so nice to have someone I knew was an amazing actress while also being familiar with the way each other worked. There's a scene in this movie with six people in the room all talking and interacting with each other. So it taught me a ton about blocking and the importance of the geography of your location. I also ended up editing this one completely alone. With Michigan Basement, John and I edited it together and it was nice to have constructive feedback and someone to bounce ideas off of. I am proud of how the glass hour flows plot wise, but man is the coloring rough on this one. It's all over the place. Once again, it still was a great, fantastic learning experience and I hope to actually make another entry into the Tales from Further Down series. Invited. Man, where do I start with Invited? Let's just say I was not in a very good place in my life emotionally when making this film. This was my hardest film to make. I poured my heart into it and honestly, so did my lead actor, David. This was our film because he was there every step of the way and it was the most I've ever collaborated with an actor creatively. Filming the second half, it was pretty much just him and I shooting into the night for hours on end. This was also the first time as a filmmaker that I actually didn't really like the results of the film. 
The premiere was kind of a flop and I was feeling a little down about the whole experience. But the more time passed, the more I grew to love this movie. This is the biggest lesson of finish what you start. Making a film is hard and sometimes you feel like giving up, but you rework things, you adapt, and you keep at it. And eventually, you have a finished movie. Invited was a huge collaboration, like I said, with my main actor, David, and this taught me the lesson to let actors act. Let them have some creative control of their performance, take suggestions from them, and sort of play a little bit, maybe, have them do a scene the way you want them to do a scene and then give them a take where they can do whatever they want. It's kind of nice for them to let a little loose and it might actually end up being the scene or the shot you end up using. Today, Invited has found this tiny following on YouTube and is easily by far my most viewed video. I still get comments on it and it's just nice to know that people are enjoying it. This was my realization that making a movie isn't always glamorous. It can be exhausting, taxing, emotionally draining, but it also taught me that in the end, it's totally worth it. The absolute biggest lesson Invited has taught me and it still resides with me as I go on in my film career is don't give up. I know it's kind of a simple lesson to learn, but it's also something that's really easy to do if you're feeling down or discouraged, but just don't give up. Finish it, finish whatever you're doing. It's, it's gonna be good in the end because it's finished. You know, a finished bad movie is way better than an unfinished good movie. So finish what you're doing and it's gonna, it's gonna help you in the long run no matter what. Any experience is good experience when it comes to filmmaking. All right guys, so that's it for part one of this series. Look forward to part two coming up real soon about the writing process and how I write a short film. Uh, like I said before, all these films that I talked about in this video are down below in the comments. Please go ahead and check those out and leave all your comments. I'd love to hear the feedback. Also comment on this video below as well. Any advice or tips you have on filmmaking for anybody that's watching as well because we all really can learn from each other in this entire process. So thanks again for watching guys and I will see you in the next one.